from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the VM Village inside of the Mandalay Bay Convention Center which is hosting over 20,000 people for VMworld 2018. With me is John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, happy to welcome back to the program two CUBE alumni. Spoke to them a couple of months ago at Dell World. Uh, we're back for VMworld. Ashley Garak Barala is the President and General Manager of Servers and Infrastructure Systems with Dell EMC, and with him is Ravi Pendakanti, who is the SVP of Product Management and Marketing with Power Edge Servers. Gentlemen, great to see you, and uh, thanks for joining us again. Great to be thanks here. Thanks for having us. All right, so the keynote this morning, there are a whole bunch of things that run on servers, leverage servers, uh, infrastructure solutions. Uh, Ashley, where are we starting? Are we talking about hyperconverge first? Sure, let's go there. All right. So, uh, if you did watch the keynote, um, which was very exciting, full, full of, uh, so full of stuff, we ran a little bit late. Um, you know, VxRack was really highlighted, um, and VxRail is um, really the preeminent uh, integrated IS solution out there. Um, what other Dell technologies um, do we have that we, where we can put um, something together, which is pre-integrated, is uh, pre-validated, backed up by one support call, one integrated experience, and is really uh, the on-ramp to IaaS for both private and multi-cloud. Um, so Pat highlighted that for us, um, and you know, if you if you look at where we've been, we're about ten quarters into VxRail, hit a few milestones we can't yet talk about in our blackout period. But the momentum, if you remember Q1, was we were doubling in size. Um, that's going to continue on going forward. So it's been a very, very uh, fantastic uptake by our customers. Yeah, uh, R Ravi, it's a, you know, many moons ago I, I was a product manager, and if somebody had come to me, it's like, well, now I have, I have Dell servers, I have you know, VMware, yeah. uh, you know, I, I have the EMC pieces, uh, you know, what, what are you going to build? Uh, you know, the, the, with the HCI market that you had, uh, that, that's a nice little toolbox that you had, and uh, I think when the acquisition happened, we knew that this was one of the areas, but give us a little insight as to what we've learned over these couple of years, uh, what's really delivering for customers and helping, uh, you know, we, we just published some research from, uh, from our Wikibon yes, side. Yes, indeed. Uh, you know, when we call it a true private cloud, which includes the HCI and some of the CI and some of the management, you know, on the full solution set, uh, it's not surprising that the Dell family sits at the top of, uh, you know, revenue. No, absolutely, Stu. You, you basically have asked a true, as a true product manager, should I say, uh, a couple of things. Number one, if you really go back in history, and if you start tracing some of the things that have happened, first and foremost, the advent of software-defined something is becoming a norm these days, for various reasons. Uh, whether it is, you know, lowering the TCO cost, ensuring that you're able to deploy your systems and infrastructure faster, could also be all about ensuring that. You're able to keep up with the changing workloads, and I bring that up very deliberately because, again, you know, uh, maybe uh, 10 years ago, nobody would talk about some of the workloads we talk about frequently today, which, uh, you know, Pat talked about just not the, uh, you know, traditional workloads. He talked about things like the AI ML. I mean, there's not a single company you can talk to these days that doesn't care about stuff like that. Talking about edge, these are all telling us that a new set of workloads to deal with. So. The, I would say the healthy confluence of the, the servers in the past to what we have with the VMware assets, and for that matter, the rest of Dell Technologies assets give us an opportunity to go ahead and serve our customers in a very different way than what we could have imagined some time back. Ravi, it's been interesting. We're at an interesting point, I think, for servers and, and systems in general, right? On one hand, uh, people are doing much more consumption of engineered systems, uh, you know, uh, things like VxRail and VxRack, things put together, show me the whole solution. Show me the power of the whole solution. You've done a lot of the engineering work, systems, software, and hardware together. On the other hand, I think a lot of people here are kind of hardware geeks, or at least started as hardware geeks. And there you kind of want to say, well, what's new about like PowerEdge, and like what's, what's going on in that world, and kind of let geek out about the actual parts inside, and things like, because there's a lot of real engineering in there oh. as well. Yeah, can, can you I talk have to, us to a say this, John. I mean, this MX is, and what's going on? You're absolutely right. First and foremost, uh, two things. I mean, when you talk about software-defined anything, 
I mean, we on the server infrastructure system side always believe that your software has to run on something. It doesn't run in ether. The whole point is that's where I think you know, uh, you got to look at the right hardware partner to come in to help you run your infrastructure, your, whether it is your platform as a service or software as a service, all these run on a platform. That's where we have PowerEdge that comes in. And then to augment that further, you know, we have talked about PowerEdge MX, the most recent entry into the brand called PowerEdge, where we have come up with a very new entrant with a modular infrastructure architecture that brings together the compute the networking and the storage side, and the best part of this is we have architected it in such a fashion uh, wherein it's a first of its class with no mid-plane. Think about it, there's no mid-plane in the design which gives you tremendous amount of flexibility and the agility you need to go back and take care of some of the things you just talked about, John. Yeah. Ashmi, help us unpack that a little bit because you know everybody says, well, you know, we're going to be future ready in the next generation, but you know, Blade servers were supposed to have some kind of flexibility. What's different now about PowerEdge MX? Why is this so important for you, you know, your platform and how does it compare with other things that we've seen in the market over the last couple of years? Sure, sure. As, as Ravi said, we've been waiting um, for the announcement for a while. We've, we uh, previewed a little bit in Dell Tech last time we talked. Uh, we said wait, wait till we can come back on, so here we are. And it's, we're about a year into 14G uh, for its announcement, shipped over a million 14G servers already. And it's been a series of announcements. If you remember, uh, um, just in the spring, we were talking about the 840 and 940 uh, really releasing four socket powerhouses around machine learning, AI, accelerated compute. This really complements that side where, with our MX launch now, we're starting a new generation of infrastructure that is really a capstone to 14G because it offers a few things. Uh, first of all, as um, Ravi alluded to, if you're going to build an infrastructure and customers are going to invest in it, if you invested in our M1000E blade system, we promised you three generations of technology. You're on generation five going to six. A really, really well engineered for the future. We have a, a history of being able to see what we need to do to accommodate that, whether it's expanding thermal, expanding power, really manageability, networking, and what Ravi talked about with the lack of a mid-plane is, is really subtraction is the addition because now, whether it's Gen Z, whether it's uh, other future buses that people haven't quite talked about yet, but we will when we come back, um, whether it's the ability to mix and match uh, the technologies that come not only on the compute side, but the storage side, it's really important that you have a futuristic view of the world because today we're, uh, we're talking about things like disaggregation or kinetic architecture, composability, and what we mean is what we can do today. What we can do today is, sure, we can carve up the resources and give you a virtual machine. We can segment a server. We can logically set up a network. We can even give you um, direct attached storage or uh, a logical portion, but we haven't yet got to the technology to be able to fully disaggregate all the resources so that we're down to that kind of level of utilization and management. Yeah, in the keynote this morning, uh, Pat got a good chuckle when he talked about when he was at Intel, building a chipset that was going to be ready for, you know, what we now call AI. AI. Um, there are many in the industry that, you know, I, I hear, you know, I'm the best storage infrastructure server or anything for AI, and it, they'll be like, well, come on, you're all using the same Intel chipset, you're all on this next generation. How do you really build something for it? How, how do we respond to that? Why, why are the Dell solutions differentiated and, and best suited for the, these next generation kind of workloads? Sure, uh, I'll take it, Rob, and then you can add on the, um, a few things. One, it's interesting that you would say we all have the same Intel uh, technology. When, when we think about AI going forward, it's really a, a move towards heterogeneous compute. And I think it's going to be about that differentiated portion of um, the technology. And uh, we, we were canvassing it the other day. There's over a thousand uh, companies that believe they are developing some sort of technology, whether it be software frameworks or hardware, to accelerate or offload those transactions. Um, my personal hope is not all a thousand make it, and we have to support a thousand, because the matrix M by N is pretty deep, but we think there's um, quite a bit to go yet 
for it to converge down on something that customers are saying, look, this, this is the solution I want, I need, but today, what you need to do is prepare for that. And so, we have, for instance, all the way from investments in some of these companies, to partnerships with the companies, to building out some of these ourselves. And it's going to come in the form of software acceleration, ASICs, FPGAs, GPGPUs, instructions within the chipsets. Um, every day there's a new processor ASIC that is going to formulate its way there. But I also think it's important for us to think about um, AI and machine learning is got to be uh, not just connecting offload, heterogeneous compute, but in form factors people can use. And so we've really concentrated on where do you do data analysis, where do you do training, perhaps more in the core and the edge, where do you do decision making and machine learning and transactional, maybe at the edge. And that's where we're using our different technologies to make sure we have the appropriate uh, pipeline between those. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and in fact, I think one of the key things to build on what Ashley just rightly mentioned is if you really think about it, you know, it was start that we could just go do some deep neural networking, but that's not true. I mean, it is, but then there are so many different flavors to it. You know, that for rendition, there is a different uh, kind of a neural networking algorithms and frameworks. You know, do you pick TensorFlow? Do you pick Cafe2? I mean, pick your favorite framework for that matter. Is it RNN, is CNN, is DNN? My point being that, there are so many permutations and combinations beyond just the processor that needs to be brought in and that's what we are doing here at Dell Technologies is ensuring that we actually get a holistic view of the entire ecosystem. Because we believe it's the ecosystem that really makes a big difference on how successful any organization would be in coming to market with a real solution. I wanted to jump in actually, Ashley, something you, you, you used, the, used the E word, uh, which is edge, right, this year. And, and, and the nice thing, any work time there's a word that is like edge that it has a lot of different meanings. It's, it's, it means something interesting is going on there. And, I, I'm, and when I think of Power Edge servers and also VX Rack, I, I think of data centers, but I know, in, you know there's a lot of places, we saw a lot of edge this morning in the keynote, right? Uh, wind turbines and ships and uh, warehouses. What's the, what's, you know, how are you all looking at remote com compute, you know, whether that's a, you know, like a ship or a warehouse or a turbine or some place that's not a big air, you know, big air conditioned data center and, and how does the, the Dell uh, server and system story fit in there? Sure, so yeah. some of this is going to be about form factor in that uh, there's just not a data center at the end of a dirt road at the base of an antenna and so we've got to accommodate that. What's um, great about what the journey we've been on is uh, about 12 years ago we started a group called DCS where we were dealing with building hyperscale. And that's trickled down into the mainstream. Well, what's also trickled down through there is we ended up having to hire material science, uh, people who knew how to do ruggedized engineering, uh, people who are doing um, HVAC power, really the best in their field at building things like modular data centers, ruggedized compute, understanding relative humidity, which sounds benign, but is really the killer Pretty as sure. opposed to temperature when it comes to putting compute out into a, uh, a harsh environment. And we're also working, of course, with um, products such as Vertex, which we induced quite a while ago, which can take different environments. For instance, it's on ships today going across the ocean as a data center. So we, we've been piling all that IP forward towards the day where the environment can be maybe one rack size, not a modular data center, but scaling down. I think when we started we thought, oh my God, we got to scale all this up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's actually come full circle to where, you know, kind of a lot size of one rack is where people are going to start to see a sweet spot, and we've got the ability to wrap all that kind of technology around it. Then it gets to the compute side where we're able to bring in the technology around material science. And we've been doing it for quite a while, and if you haven't been doing it, it's going to take you a while to get there. Um, and then finally, if you think about then into the form factor, how much power do you need? What's the right form factor? Do you really need a workhorse there, or do you need just enough compute? and really what's important is going to be the fabric of the technology to extend the data back, and then um, Rivian team have done an awesome job over the last three years, bringing us into data center management leadership. We, we absolutely are the leaders in securing and managing assets within a data center. Now we're extending that kind of capability out of your data center into the edge point, and that's really, really powerful. Uh, all right, I, I a very valid point which is why we got the open managed enterprise modular 
which we have brought in, which is, again, we think the first of its kind. All right, well, Ashley and Ravi, uh, the thing I think we've highlighted here is people that hadn't been watching thought that, you know, well, you know, servers just kind of played out and commoditized and everything. I, I wrote an article like four years ago, it's like you looked at the, the, the hyperscale ones, they hyper-optimize what they're doing. And thank you for going through so many things from, you know, talking about from the edge to rugged to, you know, what's happened in the data center, as you said, in the software-defined world. Uh, it's all got to live somewhere. And uh, to. Th those things in some form factor, it's compute and servers underlie all of it. So once again, Ashley and Robbie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Lots more programming here, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, VMworld 2018. Thank you for watching theCUBE.